Why take a long train journey in Vietnam when flights are much faster, you might ask? We booked our tickets in order to find out exactly what these journeys are like. By doing this, we can now share with you six things you should know before booking your Vietnam train ride. The first decision that you'll need to make is what class you're going to travel in. You've got four options to choose from. The hard seat, the soft seat, six bed sleeper, or a four bed sleeper. Let's walk through each of these options to help you decide which one is best for you. Really quickly, I've noticed that many of you that watch videos on this channel haven't subscribed yet. Only 2.4% of you have subscribed. We've set a goal for this year to reach a minimum of 5% by the end of the year. But we need your help, we can't do that by ourselves. As the channel grows, we promise to always visit new places, keep traveling, share that information with you. So if you're looking for information, if you're looking for ideas of what to do, or if you're considering living in that area, if you've ever watched a video on the channel and it was of any value, please hit subscribe. Anyway, let's get on with today's video. This is the cheapest option and the least comfortable. This cabin is usually full of locals and these seats are probably fine for shorter trips, but for a longer journey or a night trip, it would be a bit of a challenge. There's no air conditioning in here. The cabin is cooled with fans, so you can imagine there's a high chance it'll become stuffy and uncomfortable during a long journey. For your luggage, there's overhead racks, but if the cabin is full and you have a good amount of luggage with you, this cabin could prove to be a bit of an issue. If all of the overhead storage space has been taken before you get on board, you'll need to keep the luggage near you or in the aisle, which is not ideal, especially for a long journey. For a more comfortable journey, you should consider booking a soft seat. These seats are ideal for a short journey or a day trip. The cabin is air conditioned and there's limited storage space for your luggage. You have either overhead racks or a small amount of space under your seat. It's not uncommon for more tickets to be sold than seats. So don't be surprised if you see people sitting on little stools in the aisles. You'll get a good view from here as the cabin has large windows. There's a few power outlets throughout the cabin. If you're planning to take an overnight journey, the soft seat isn't recommended. If the train you intend to travel on is traveling during the night, you'll want to consider one of the sleeper options. The six bed sleeper is a private room with six beds. They are divided into two rows of three beds. Word of warning, it can feel a little cramped if all beds are occupied and everyone has a lot of luggage. Choose one of the bottom bunks for a little more space if you're traveling during the day. The middle bunk is probably the best for sleeping during the night and you should try and avoid the top bunk as there's less space up there and it might feel a little bit claustrophobic for some people. This cabin is probably a good option if you're open to social interaction as you're sharing a more intimate space with potentially five other people. And as you'd expect, the four bed sleeper is definitely the most comfortable and spacious. Here you'll find four beds arranged in two rows of bunks. The beds are a little more comfortable and there's space under the bottom bunk so you can store your luggage. These rooms and the rooms with six bunks are air conditioned. Maybe a little bit too much. They can get a little bit cold. Make sure you have a jacket or something warm such as a blanket to wrap around you just in case it's too cold. With all sleepers, you are provided with sheets and pillows. In addition, you'll find electrical outlets and reading lights. The bottom bunk is a better option for daytime trips as you can look out of the window at the view and place your laptop on the table to do some work or watch a movie. For sleeping, go with the top bunk. This is because you feel every bump when your head is on the pillow on the bottom bunk. Buying your train tickets is straightforward. As a general rule, tickets for longer routes are available to purchase 60 days in advance, whereas tickets for shorter routes are usually released 30 days before departure. We use the website want to asia to book our tickets and we highly recommend that website. Here's an example of the prices for the train we're travelling on from Da Nang to Machang. 
When you make the booking, you should receive an email with a receipt instantly. Then within the next two hours, you should receive a second email with your booking confirmation looking something like this with a QR code, name and your seat number. It's really important to take into consideration that trains in Vietnam are often delayed. If you're aiming to catch a connecting flight after your train journey, make sure you factor in an extra few hours for delays just to be on the safe side. Personally, if I'm taking a long train journey, I always try to avoid trying to catch a connecting flight on the same day as using a train, as that would just make me feel anxious and I'd rather avoid that anxiety. If time permits, give yourself an additional night or a day or two to explore the new destination. Once you're on board and you've got yourself settled, at some point you're probably going to get hungry, especially on a journey like this one, which takes roughly about 11 and a half hours. The majority of the trains do have a dining car, so you can leave your cabin and go and mingle with a few other people. This car is usually located at the back of the train. Also, you'll notice food trolleys passing through the cabin regularly, selling noodles, snacks, hot meals, drinks and other items. Hot meals usually include a few options such as meat, rice and some greens and cost around 50 to 100,000 Vietnamese dong. You can also stop up and bring your own snacks on board. We bought a few snacks at the train station in advance. Vendors also sometimes get on the trains when the train stops at one of the stations and walk up and down selling a few other things such as snacks fruit and drinks. For this journey we opted for a day train purely to witness the breathtaking scenery along the way. Of course flying is a much faster and convenient option but sometimes the best part of travelling is the views you get to experience along the way and Vietnam definitely doesn't disappoint. Take a look at this. I'll leave the natural beauty to speak for itself for a moment. If you don't know this already, the traffic in Vietnam is wild in many parts of the country and it can be a shock to the system initially. Taking a train is by far the safest form of transport. Like anywhere in the world though, you need to be vigilant as theft is common, particularly on night trains. Make sure you put a lock on your luggage and try to keep it near you at all times if you can. I know that I'm stating the obvious here, but I think it's worth it. Make sure you don't leave your items such as your computer, smartphone, camera, wallet, unattended, even to go to the bathroom. You don't know the people that you're sharing your cabin with, so caution is always the best option here. The toilets on board, of course, might not be up to everyone's standard. And as you can imagine, on long train journeys, they can sometimes become quite unpleasant. Thankfully, during our journey, that wasn't the case as they were cleaned regularly. Train journeys are always noisy and Vietnam trains are by no means an exception. Bringing an eye mask with you, earplugs and a blanket for a night train or even a day journey where you plan on getting some sleep are all highly recommended. But hey! You're not choosing this mode of transport because you're looking for maximum comfort and rest. It's the experience you're looking for. You might love it or you might think to yourself, never again. Hop on board, get yourself settled, have an open mind and enjoy the ride. If Da Nang isn't included in your Vietnam itinerary, it really should be. Go and have a look at this video now to find out where the best areas are in Da Nang for you to stay. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.